Good to see everybody. I, I keep wanting to say this morning because I'm from Athens, Georgia, and I can't get the time change in my head to save my life this week. Um, good afternoon, everybody. This, this talk is called Conducting Your Business. It's a talk about lessons learned and hopefully advice given and received from conducting as in musical conducting. If you're expecting this to be an electrical conducting course, this is, this is not that session. This is, this is on conducting <coughs> the music part of it. Uh, my name is Michael Brewer. Uh, my Twitter handle is operatic. Um, if, you, if you guys friend me, try to put something in your friend request or in your bio or something that lets me know how I know you, because I, I tend to, to run my Twitter at private level so, so that I cut. It's a very common word, tw Twitter handle, and, and thus if I don't do that, the crazies just pile and pile and pile on top of me. Um, I am very thrilled to be here at, at the Fifth Open Source Bridge Project. Um, I've been, I was at the first two giving, conducting the Geek Choir sessions at those two and at the one on Tuesday. Um, I am an application programmer specialist, read Postgres and PHP web developer at the University of Georgia. Uh, that's my day job. My other job is I conduct, compose, and play in a lot of musical groups around Athens, um, including I, I direct the Classic City Band, which is Georgia's longest continuously operating community band. And the genesis with this talk was me thinking about the similarities between community music organizations, which are, which are an area of my expertise, community volunteer groups, and open source projects. We have, we have a lot of similarities and differences, and I wanted to go over some of those and go over some of the, some of the lessons in project leadership that I can impart from being a conductor for <laughs> off and on for 20 years now. Um, I certainly don't know everything, and if you've got a question, please ask it. If you've got advice, please give it. Um, this, is, this is an opportunity for a dialogue. Um, so, uh, obviously we have the obvious difference, one, we're, you know, in music organizations, we're working with music, and the others, we're working with code. Also, you wind up having a length of time. Um, musical groups, traditionally community groups especially, have usually been along longer than a, an open source project. Um, like I said, the, the band I conduct has been around for 37 years now. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of musical groups have been running for, for a lot longer. Thus, you have to deal with a lot of institutional memory that might not be as built up in your open source project. Also, open source projects tend to be more about scratching the itch, fixing something that's broken, do, working on a very, a very single focus project than musical groups, which tend to be just kind of recurring natural phenomenon. Um, Involvement is also different. The barriers to entry for our open source projects and our music projects are different. Um, hi, come on in. Um, although there are parallels that can be drawn. For you guys, people need to code or know something about coding. You know, for us, we have to have musicians. Um, in musical groups, you have something that I don't think that open source c projects really do per se, which you have a difference between auditioned groups and non-auditioned groups. Um, you, do open source projects really ask people to prove if they can code before they code per se? Postgres is, is the open source project I'm most closely associated with and they have different levels of, of access, core access, and so usually you have to this is a somewhat similar process where you have to demonstrate that you, you know what you're doing before they give you 
thing. Also, sometimes you have a skin in the game difference between the two, where um, musical groups will often ask people to contribute money to the group itself in order, because if, if you have a volunteer group, especially a music group, the stakes don't seem to be as high, and people just come in and come out. Where, and so a lot, of, a lot of music orgs have asked people to, okay, you want your kid to play in the youth orchestra, they need to pay a nominal fee, which is only there to get people involved in what they're doing. There are several, as I look at, there are several different parallels between organization parts of open source groups and musical groups. You have single leader structures, um, wherein you have the, the one person running the project, the Linus, you know, you, you have that, that one head that determines the direction that everything is going to go. Unquestioned authority, or sometimes questioned authority, but authority vested in one person. Then you have self-governing organizations. I actually lead both these types of groups. I lead a, a brass choir that is just me saying what we're doing, when we're doing it. And I also have to lead, the Classic City Band is a self-governing organization. Um, I report to a board of directors. I'm not the music director of that group. I'm the principal conductor, which in music terminology is, is a different thing. And so there are different strategies that when you want to get a project from point A to B that you, that you have to do when you're dealing with a self-governing organization. More of a focus on building consensus, on persuading people why your ideas are the way they should go. Other similarities, um, you guys have deadlines and music groups have concerts. Um, it's, it seems pretty s straightforward, but, but it's, it's, it's interesting, at least to me, to think of project deadlines as a concert. You've said what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, you can't move it. Yeah, it's very difficult to push that deadline, once you've, once you've advertised what, when it's going to be. We both have recruiting problems. How do we get people to know what our project is? Once people know what our project is, how do we get people to come in the front door and, con and contribute in a meaningful way to what we're doing? How do we get rid of people that are not helping the project? Um, I'm I don't know how much of this you guys run into in open source projects. Have you guys had team members that are fairly entrenched and are not helping in, in some of your teams? Good. We'll, we'll get to this in, in, hopefully, just a second if I set this up. Thing. Also, something you may not have considered, both are both music and open source projects tend to develop house styles over time, be they coding styles or styles of playing. Uh, a anecdote I like to talk about in terms of this is there are two schools of oboe playing. Um, they are drastically different in terms of style. And a colleague of mine about 15 years ago decided to research where these oboe schools came from. And it turns out they can all be traced back to an, two European orchestras that wanted to sound different from each other. And so the conductors in each group told their oboe players to play in different ways. They did that. They started doing that. People studied from one or the other, and it grew into two different types of a thing where now people don't really think about why, why, do we do the way, why do we do these things. It's often very difficult to, in, in a project, especially the longer projects have been around, it's, it's very difficult to reevaluate how you are doing projects because we do them the way we've always done them. Oh, we, we, we follow this school of coding because it's the way, way we do it. We, we do not do this. Um, 
it's I'm not an oboist. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a trombonist, so I'm coming at this from a trombone and connected perspective. My recollection of this is that it has to do with the vibrato styles. A very tight vibrato, a very, um, if you think about, there, there's a similar type of saxophone playing where there, you, get, um, you get two different schools of saxophone playing. There's a French school that's very, a very tight vibrato, very yee kind of thing going versus kind of what a more lyrical sing, can, cantor of songs st type style of playing. And I, my recollection from when I discussed this with this guy 12, 15 years ago was, was that they were, the differences were mostly in terms of, of speed of vibrato and technical versus lyrical. I'm sorry? Amateurs are a little different. The oh, the embouchure, yes. Yeah. Presumably the embouchure and the breath, the breath support and stuff would be, would be much different. Um, how do we treat our members in open source projects and in musical projects? Remember that the word amateur comes from, from lover of X, Y, or Z. Amateurs do projects because they want to do them. We do open source projects because we want to. We, we, play, we play in groups or we sing in groups because we want to do it. Um, amateur can sometimes have a negative connotation, like when we think about community theater, for example, or something where we think about less skilled. But the Olympics used to be, up until you know, 20, 30 years ago, was built on amateurs. And we, we make tremendous open source projects that are more like Olympics than community theater kind of stuff. I, when I was looking up amateur in Wikipedia, I was really amused by, they actually have an entry. It's mostly about music and the Wikipedia entry about this. But then they say, oh yeah, open source programming. I was very happy to see that when I was, I didn't even put this in Wikipedia myself. I was, I was very happy that someone else was going on the same idea. I was also happy to see citation needed put on the end of that. That was fine. There's, an, there's sometimes a misconception in community groups, music groups, that the ideal is a whole bunch of volunteer virtuosi. That, you know, the, the best the best of all possible worlds in your open source project is that you have 100% Torvalds. You know, all of course doing it for free. One of the joys in, in community music organizations is working with people at different levels of skill. And sometimes I think in open source projects we tend to forget the joy in working, in helping someone that's less skilled level up or in leveling yourself up to the rest of the team. And this is something I see in music that I, I think hopefully would be an insight that might be useful to you in, in open source projects, is think about, think about that. Make sure, come on in, come on in. Make sure to praise your team members. Make sure to thank them because these are the people that say yes. Um, we talk a lot, of, there, are, there are theater improv exercises where, where, where you can do, where the whole exercise is about yes and. And, and um, it's often a good corporate team building exercise to do, to take bizarre situations and only say yes to them. Open source developers, amateur musicians, amateur, you know, the, amateur theater, these are people that say yes to things and that's extremely valuable and it needs to be praised repeatedly and often in your dealings with people. Also, the team needs to be respected in, in some wings. Some, oftentimes, and you know, you'll see this in community music organizations, especially authoritarian top-down structures, the director will just run over people. You know, we have to do something and we, we just flatten, flatten all opposition. And when, when that happens repeatedly, you see people vote with their feet and move away from, 
the music project. And it's similar in open source projects. We need to make sure that we respect all the members of the team because if we don't, people will silently, usually, or sometimes very loudly, leave. How many of you guys in a project get, get members that are like, I don't want to have to worry about, you know, I don't want to have to worry about source control. I don't have to worry about documentation. I just want to code. You know, that's all I need to worry about. I just want to code. I just want to hack. We have the same thing in music groups. I just want to sing. I just want to play. Don't worry me about, you know, this, that, or the other thing. How can we deal with this kind of situation? The more advanced work you can do to, to, structure, to structure the experience for people, the better. Um, in musical organizations, you know, the more librarians you can throw at them, stage managers, publicists, fundraisers, band boosters, music boosters of any kind. These are, the presence of these people enables you to have more people that just want to play. Because you're always going to have kind of a continuum of volunteers between people that want to do everything, people that want to do nothing, and you want to get as many people as you can for your project. Try to set up, you know, very good source control systems, very specific documentation requirements. Postgres has, has one of the cleanest code bases of, of many open source projects because they are extremely anal for a database that whose who's, um, the Volvo of, of databases, um, you know, they're, they're very concerned with clean, clean code. You do these things in a certain way, which frees members to not have to worry about, okay, this is the house style, this is, thing. I, we have people that take care of this, you know, people that don't. This is also, these things are, these types of things, look at your project and figure out who your librarians or your, or your stage managers could be. That's how people can help as they can help. People that aren't your, your crack coders, but who want to be a part of your project, they can help publicize. They can help fill out grant applications for your project. They can help in many, many ways. Back to the poisonous members for a bit. Um, this, w when I was putting the, the description together for this thing, I, I talk about it being a dialogue. Um, the ways I've seen for how to, how to get rid of poisonous members partly depend on how your, how your group is structured. If it's an authoritarian model or a top-down model, usually your top-down person gets that kind of call. They get to make the call. You don't get to come anymore. And they can exercise that, that power at their discretion. Um, with a more uh, self-governing organization or with an organization that has actual bylaws and rules on member things, there might be a different way of doing it. Um, how do you guys, in open source projects, how do you usually handle I mean, just flipping the commit bit, or how, how do you usually take care of that? Don't, don't take the pull request. Mm -hmm. yeah, One thing that we do is uh, direct engagement in back channels first. Mm -hmm. If you've got a person like this, engage them directly in the back channel, notice you're exhibiting these behaviors, or reason is causing some friction with other members, things like that. And then eventually flipping that bit. If uh -huh, Things uh -huh. can't get resolved, but a lot of times, like just having a good one-on-one -on -one conversation with people. Helps them how much success? How much do you, success do you have at modifying behavior before you get to the point of having to get rid of them? If you had to kind of put a number on. Maybe fifty-fifty. If I yeah. Think about the last yeah. you know, fifteen years. <laughs> Some mm. people you just can't please, right? And, mm. They're not gonna be happy until they find that product. I play in a, in a um, community orchestra where sometimes the principal members on, on their parts are usually you know, very long tenured. And um, the longer the tenure, the harder it is to get rid of a person if there's a problem. And um, 
I'm not sure how many, I mean, this, in, a, in a sense, this is a topic, I'll, I'll, you know, a session topic all in itself. Um, I know that there's a, there's a talk online on YouTube about, um, if you'll pardon the expression, assholes are killing your project. Um, you can look, look that one up on there. Um, it's, it's a tough, tough situation, especially with um, when you aren't paid. It's, you know, the only thing that you have is the, is the work and the community to remove the community or the work from people often is very tough. We have a code of conduct here. Mm -hmm. Squire and, and has a similar thing. And the code of conduct is that you help a lot. Yeah. Yeah, the more documentation, the better. Um, it's one of the, one of the weird things about, I shouldn't say weird, one of the challenges of the community band I conduct is that for a group that's been around 35, 36, 37 years, they don't have a lot of documented procedures. And um, there are a lot of non-documented procedures. And there's a lot of, that guy is the guy that does it. This, this lady is the, is the one that does why. This per, you know, these three people handle this. Document what you can so that when things happen, we, you know how to do. Speaking of codes of conduct, I, I couldn't resist the pun. Um, I'm going to move to specific, specific leadership, if you want to call it leadership lessons I've learned, as a conductor on how to get people to do things. Um, when we think about conductors, we think about the, the animated bit at the, at the beginning where, where, the, where Leopold Stokowski, you know, breaks a stick and he's doing all the stuff with his hands. When people watch conductors, you know, they often watch what we're do doing because we're the visible, we're in front of the group and we're very visible. But the wavy arm bits, as I'm going to call them, those are pretty much the least important parts of conducting close to the least important parts. They can still get you if they're wrong, but they don't really, a lot of times there's a misconception among conductors that, that everything needs to be absolutely perfect, you know, or the person needs to kind of look very drum majory or something like that before things will actually work, but it's not, that's not the preparation part. Look at your open source projects for your wavy bits. What is in front of your project that outside that your audience sees when they're watching you perform, in a sense, that actually isn't, you know, it, it looks like it's important to the, to the audience, but isn't actually what makes your project happen. Are there, are there wavy bits that need to be better? Or are the wavy bits being emphasized to the detriment of the things in your project that actually make it work? Oftentimes I get asked, how do you get people to do things? Um, two years ago, I put on a community theater performance of Listuart, the Stravinsky Listuart de Sadat, The Soldier's Tale, and the Walton Facade Suites. Um, and we threw in... Uh, we threw in a Stravinsky fanfare for the theater in front of it, and we did the, if you were at the um, Geek Choir on Tuesday, we did the Reich clapping music before the Walton. And it was all wonderful. It was a fully staged production of L'Histoire with dancing, ballet dancing with a New York trained dancer and lights and everything. We usually we think of Stravinsky L'Histoire as a concert music piece, but this was the actual original theatrical work and we did it all for free, no one got paid. And it's a piece that is incredibly difficult technically, especially on the musicians and on the dancers. Ask people. How do you get people to build a database that can compete with Oracle and MS SQL? Ask him. I mean, people could say no, but dream it, and ask it. 
there's a t TED talk by Amanda Palmer that talks about the art of asking. Now, those of you who, who, are, who have heard of Amanda Palmer in the last year know that this is a co somewhat controversial statement. Um, last year, Amanda Palmer did a tour that I almost played in, as in I was supposed to play in and I had to withdraw from it, um, wherein she would go to a town and say, come on, all you musicians that want to, and, we'll just, and you can play with me for, a, for you know, a, a set. Play a set with me at this concert. Got her in trouble with the local musician unions who said, everyone else in your group is being paid but these guys. What's, what's going on there? The AFM kind of, kind of started talking about it. Um, they came to Atlanta at a time when the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra was on strike. And it was not a good time for people to come, come and play. I understood what she was going for. Sometimes you just want to play with your fans. Sometimes you just want to play with people. Problem is, you have to know the difference between asking people, hey, let's build a database. We've got, we've got some tech talk, but hey, you know, we've got some professionals here, but hey, you know, if you want to help, come on, come on and help. In, and they're in, you know, between asking people to work on a project and taking advantage of people and working on a project. Music, Musician-wise, we have a variant of the old pick two thing where you talk about the triangle thing of good, fast, cheap, or, or I'm sorry, correct, fast, and cheap, or pick two on any particular project. With musicians, you get money, experience, and prestige. If only one of these, if none of these things are at stake, you don't take the gig. If one of these things is in there, it better be a lot of whatever it is. A whole heck of a lot of whatever it is. If it's two, do it. If it's three, wonderful. But this is our pick two. And that, that's how we usually look at these things. And when you're running your open source projects, usually money isn't going to be in there. It might be. You might, you might have an employer who will pay you to work on open source projects, if, if, if you're lucky. Um, but open source wise, this is usually when you talk to people about working on a project, this is what you need to emphasize to them. Pick two or one if it's a really good one. And fortunately, in open source projects, you can really get a lot of experience, experience that will help you later on. My musicians for Listoire de Soldat, they were like, Stravinsky, Listoire, I'm in. I want to do that because it's an incredibly, it's an incredibly t technical piece that is on every music audition that they'll ever take. They needed the experience. They, they wanted to, to do it. And I was very, very blessed and very fortunate that they, that they really wanted to do it. Um, it was good for their profile in the sense of when they, when they applied to places, they could list it on their program. Yes, I've, I've performed L'Histoire du Soldat. With your, with your team members, experience, prestige, or profile, good profile gigs. And again, this whole question of respecting your team members. Um, if they are volunteering for you, do not run, try not to run over them. Um, we, our musicians on, on Least Rode Soldat were let go at a very prescribed length of, of you know, we negotiated with them before they even began saying, you are not going to be here from seven o'clock until midnight, one o'clock working on this stuff. You are here on these days. You are volunteers. You're helping us out on this project. You'll, you'll be here, 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 and here. Also, respect in, in musical organizations can also get translated as money. You get models where everybody gets paid. This is the easy, this is the professional model. You're, you're really no longer dealing with amateurs at this point because you are getting paid. No one gets paid. This is the second easiest to get people to, to volunteer for. Obviously, it's easy to get people when everyone gets paid. No one gets paid is actually just about as easy because people feel like they're respected, feel like they're being treated equally. No one got paid on Least Toward Soldat. No one did. 
Um, there's currently a music project go there's currently a theater project going on that they're having difficulty getting people for because the actors are getting paid, the set crew is getting paid, the you know, lights and sound are getting paid. Hey, can we get some volunteers for the pit? That's tricky. It's very tricky. Very t difficult to, to get going. There's a model where, in music where you have guest artists that get paid. That usually works. If, if the people that are amateurs respect the guest artists enough, <laughs> you know, if they're cool with it, and they know it happens, a very dangerous model is some people get paid, but you don't know who they are. That can be very, very tricky. Students get paid is a variant on guest artists get paid. Whether you call them scholarships, interns, however you want to work at building the future, this is a model that can also work. It is difficult if only you as project leader get paid. That is very difficult to implement unless it's the culture. Because at some point, someone will ask, why? Why? Why should we do it that way? Why should you get paid X amount? Can we, can we spread this up a little bit? Spread this out a little bit more? The great thing about asking people, ask them to do big project. Dream big. A lot of times people will volunteer to do a big project just because it's a big project. I want to work on a database because it's a database. I don't really, you know, I could work on you know, I'm, I'm working on something that's smaller, sure, but let's, let's stretch it. Let's think of what a really big project can be. The important thing is the work. Thank you, Ten. That's another theater thing, by the way, for those of you who are presenting. Someone gives you, gives you f f five to curtain, you say, thank you, five. Okay, I should have said ten. Thank you, ten. Okay. It's, a, it's a wonderful communication protocol at where where they, they say it and you acknowledge it. To, uh, uh, the handshake takes place. It's a wonderful thing in community theater for the geeky. The, but yeah, the important thing is the work that you're doing. When you're leading a project, it's, uh, it's important to make decisions. Maybe make quick decisions. Good decisions are better than bad decisions, but sometimes you just need to make a decision to get things moving. Make, be, be decisive, make the call. That being said, be willing to be wrong. Part of, part of making a decision, of making a decision for a project is that you have to be willing to make a mistake. You have to be, you have to know that it can happen, you have to go right into it, and it'll, and as long as you're willing to change course, admit when a mistake is a mistake, you don't have to dwell in it. You, know, you, don't have to, you don't have to fixate on, on the things that go wrong, but be willing to change the course of the ship if you're headed into rocks. And it's, it's fine, but make the decisions, make them quickly, and tack if you have to. And have a sense of humor about it will help. There are a lot of different styles of leadership in a, um, from a podium or in your project, you have that authoritarian style. Frederick Fresnel, is, um, the late Frederick Fresnel, was a legendary band conductor. Um, little, very, very short guy. And I worked stage crew for him at the Interlochen Arts Camp. And we had to bring out this podium that was probably about that high for this guy. He would destroy kids. He, he, legendarily, he would make a, tri a percussion player, high school student, playing a triangle, you know, hit that part. He spent half an hour getting, nope, too long, nope, too loud, nope, bad attack, nope, too short. Half an hour with this kid. Destroyed him. This is not an uncommon style of leadership in, in music. That, that maestro myth, that, that you know, I am, I am the person from on high, I make the decisions. We sometimes see this in open source projects where someone says, I'm the alpha, 
I'm the, I'm the head coder, you know, what I, when I say jump, jump, what I say goes. This sometimes works for people. It's, it, has, it is evolving its way out of the music business because music is becoming more competitive. There are more options for volunteers to spend their time on, and a lot of people don't want to have someone telling them for 30 minutes how they're not doing their job right. One little tiny bit of their job right. You'll also see the political leaders, wherein, wherein someone will, you know, very, will very, get very into the psychology of things. And, you know, and will read their Sun Tzu, their, their Machiavelli, and will be very, very, you know, manipulative in their project management. This does sometimes work. It is not a style I'm I am comfortable with. I prefer a consensus building style, wherein you get buy-in from the group at large, if at all possible. In our, in our modern climate, when people have choices, they have easily identifiable sources, you know, your band, your band is terrible, I don't like dealing with you, I'm going to Google and see what other community bands are, in, are close to me, because I'm tired of dealing with this person. Lots of choices. Build consensus. Again, be wary of that cult of personality when you're leading a group. Sometimes a group can be identified with a person rather than what it is about. This happens a lot in musical groups, especially when, again, they might be a vanity project by the conductor or something like that, and they'll be the, the FUBAR singers, <laughs> conducted by FUBAR. Um, be very careful of that, especially in long-lived pro projects. Um, it leads to, to again, this, this kind of maestro myth kind of thing. Don't be tempted by the dark side of the force. Forever will it dominate your destiny, in a sense. The culture that you create or encourage as a leader in your community will be picked up by everyone else, especially the longer the project goes. What works for me, know what you're doing. Really, really study what the piece is as much as possible. Really, really study what, you're, what, what you think. Know the work. Know yourself. This is very hard. This is easy. This is hard. I had a conductor, instructor of mine, once tell me that to stand in front of an orchestra, you had to be a perfect crystal his words, because you're standing in front of people that have played this work since before you were born, probably. And you have to tell them, or you have to convince them, you have to come to a consensus, why you think it has to be this way. And, and his feeling was that any flaws in the crystal would destroy you in front of them. I don't believe that that's the case. I believe authenticity is the key. Be yourself, and I know, thank you five, which is now three, thank you. Be yourself, make it worth it. Be centered, know your flaws. In my opinion, you don't have to be a perfect crystal to lead a team. You just have to know what your crystal is. Know the, know the weak points in your Jenga structure before you build on top of it. If you do that, if you are centered, you, you will be much stronger. A lot of problems that you run into in project management and in le project leadership come when you are having to deal with your own stuff as well as dealing with someone else's stuff and you are not all there and the actual conflict is about something else. Be connected. This is kind of a, a mushy gushy theater term or, or kind of a zenish term. Be connected. Be in your moment and know who you are. This is, kind, this is more kind of a conductor thing. It might not be as, as useful. Love. Love the work, love the people. 
love them, accept them, love them, help them. And it will work. Remember what it is that you're doing. You're building communities. You are building families, in a sense. You're doing meaningful work. And when it works, you change the perception of reality. The world was something else before the Barbara Adagio for strings. The world is something else after it is written. The world was so different before Wikipedia, when we had to look up things in the books. The world is different after Wikipedia. When it works, when it really, really works, you're changing the nature of existence, in a sense. And it's wonderful, sobering, but it's wonderful. We have like a couple of minutes for questions. Can I answer any questions from you guys? You surely have questions. Yes? When you're in your group, do you have anyone that tries to like in charge of welcoming new members? Or is that just kind of a general? <sighs> Our groups generally you try to set a policy to everyone of to everyone an overall, as you say, code of conduct. It's helpful to, that everybody helps out everybody, especially in large musical groups when sometimes the conductor is distant from the person. You know, they're not going to be able to speak to the fourth alto on the right, something like that. So you need to make sure that the third alto and the, four, and the fifth alto, that they're nice to them. And this can be really tricky because you don't, you don't run the third and fourth alto, and it's possible that your third alto might not like the cut of the fourth out to his jib and might tell them that. And as a conductor, you need to try to be in touch with your group and determine when there are these kind of cultures, embedded cultures. Um, a group will, a community will protect itself. And, and oftentimes, um, it's, it's like um, the Clay Shirky talk, a, um, a, a group is its own worst enemy sometimes. Um, sometimes people can control in musical groups just as well as in, in other groups. And, and you need to be c as connected as you can be to find out the trolls and stop them. Yes? Is there anything that you could say, just like on a high level, I guess, sort of philosophy of how to um, empower people to feel like they're leaders um, instead of, like, when people come in as new to a project, if mm -hmm. there is uh, clear leadership there already, see a lot of deference to those leaders' decisions and ideas, how do you get, how do you encourage people to like step up and be deputized? Sure. Um, it's tricky. Leadership begets leadership in a sense. Um, and sometimes you have to plant seeds in people and you just have to kind of pick people and m give them responsibility, um, put them in situations where they will have to decide. Um, a lot of, that, that you know, making decisions, making a group move um, is sometimes the, the, the hardest part of it. Being, you know, being willing to say, you know, I don't really know what the future entails, but we're going, I don't know what's behind door number one or door number two. I'm going to pick door number two. Making the call. Of, of which door you're going to go into. Yeah, that's, that's really the trick. And being okay with making it, being okay with being wrong. Tell your people it's okay if you're wrong. That's a lot of times people are afraid to make decisions, to make that kind of command kind of decision because they're afraid of what if I'm wrong. Try to set up structures wherein, you know, if they follow you, they, if, if I follow you can catch me, you know. We're in there. There's some kind of thing. Definitely don't set them up. Set them up for destruction on their first call. But that's that's how I would approach it. Pick leadership. Give them things to do. Give them give them responsibility, achievable responsibility, and let them know that they can fail and it'll be okay. But that but that they need to learn while they're doing it. Yes? Is there any utility to uh, kind of surveys or automated surveys? You know, how are you feeling about this? 
possibly. It's very tricky because surveys can lead the the it can lead the witness in a sense. What does everybody think about the spring program? Are you versus? Are you guys okay with the spring program? I made a web form with every single piece. Could you indicate, you know, up or down on everything? It's very tricky. And sometimes, sometimes there are things that you don't want people to decide if you have the option. Sometimes there are responsibilities that you, can, that you need to have as a leader that you can't offset to people. And it's very dangerous to web form those away. And then there's this thing like the, the 360 review. Thank you, you get, James. Where you get people yeah. to, to give yes. honest I, I mean, it's, it's very tricky, and as long as there's communication, and as long as you say, you know, if I'm talking to my group, you know, I'd love, I'd love your feedback on this kind of stuff. Ultimately, the choice is mine, but I still want to hear from you on this kind of thing. And on, on issues where, where you can give to people, you know, if they say, hey, can we do this piece? Do it. 